Hey coding pals, ever felt like your Android apps code is a messy puzzle and you wish there were a cleaner way to put it all together? Well, today we are talking about something called MVVM. But what's this MVVM thing? Is it just a tech jargon or does it make your life easier? Well, a lot, it's here to rescue your code. Remember when your app's different parts were all tangled up together? Like a plate of spaghetti. MVVM is like a neat freak. It helps you sort things out. When I started Android development, almost all logic from data fetching to data load was kept in a single activity, which meant my code had to read and also had to maintain. So you might be wondering what is MVVM? So MVVM stands for Model View View Model. It's like a blueprint for building an app. So helping us keep our code organized and easily managed. So we have the first part. So this is just the model. Think of it as the brainy part. So the model handles data like the information your app needs. It could be anything from a list of friends to high score in a game. Then we have the second part. This is the part you see and interact with. So the user interface. It's what makes your app look good and lets you tap buttons or swipe screens. Then we have the third part, which is just the view model. Now this is the secret source. The view model connects the model and the view. It takes care of the data your app needs and prepares it for the view to show. It's like a middle person making sure everything runs smoothly. So why is MVVM cool? It keeps things tidy. The model knows about the data. The view knows about the stuff and the view model makes sure they work together without any chaos. So imagine making a sandwich. The ingredients are like the model, the sandwich is the view, and the chef is the view model. Each part does its job and you get a delicious sandwich in the end. So that's the MVVM for your app, making sure everything works together smoothly and deliciously. So let's see a simple example of an app that implements an MVVM architecture in Android. Okay, so let's see MVVM in action. So I'm going to explain this as simple as possible. Okay, so the first case here is the data layer. So the data layer is the place where we are going to fetch our data and receive it. So in a simplistic case, here we can create another package. So inside here, our MVVM, we have our UI and the main activity. So for this case, we can create a new package. Let's call this data. So inside here, we can generate our models and we can try to create a new package. Let's call this models. And inside the models here, we can insert now our data models we have. So for example, for our case, we are going to have this to be name. Okay, so for our model here, we are going to have a name. Let's create a variable and call this name. And this is just going to be of type string. The next case here, we're going to have edge, for example. So this is just a simple example, which we're going to demonstrate here. So we have here our name, which is just the model that we're going to receive. The next case is to create a repository. So a repository is going to communicate to the view model, but we don't want to communicate directly to the data layer, which we're going to be here. So for example, this data could be arising from a database like room database, or we can be fetching this to our network. So for example, something like Firebase or an API or your own uh, custom APIs, which you have. So for a case, we're going to be making this to come inside here. Let's create here a new package and we can call this repository. So you can hear often sometimes a repository pattern. So this is going to be similar here. Okay, now let's create here our class and make things more cleaner. We're going to create an interface and a repository implementation. So for example, here, let's create our, let's call this name repository. The times when you fetch your data from the database, you're going to use a suspend function. So let's create here a suspend function and call this get names. And this basically is going to return us a list of strings or let's call it a list of name because we have already our model there. Then we have to create a repository implementation for this. So let's insert here a new class and we can call this repository. Okay, so this class is going to directly implement from the repository. Okay, 
Now we can press Ctrl I here to implement the functions which we have generated there. So here we have our suspend function and here we can mimic our network request or our database request because we are going to suspend for, for example, for two or three seconds. Okay, so for this case, let's call here our delay and we want to delay for 5,000 milliseconds. And basically here we can call now return and we want to return a list. And here we can create brand new names. So for example, here, the name could be John. Let's duplicate this to three times. So for example here, let's change this to Musa. Let's call this Wuzela. Okay, so here we have a list of names. So we are mimicking here a database or a network request by delaying this to five seconds and then returning here our name. So we have here our repository. Now we have our data sorted out. So the next case here is to create the view model. So basically inside here our UI package, we can create a new package. So for example here, let's insert a new package and we can call this, for example, you have a home feature, so you can call this home. And here basically now let's create a new package and also we can call this view model. So inside here, let's create our name view model. Okay, so this class is going to inherit from our view model class. So here inside our constructor, we have to pass in the repository. So let's create here a private variable and call this repository. And basically here we are using a name repository. As you can see, we're using here an interface and not the implementation directly. So we are going to use a, a direct injection here. So you can use a library like Daggerhilt or different types of library to provide your dependencies. But this, this is just a simple example. So we can just call here our name repository implementation directly. And we don't have any other dependencies to part directly there. So we have our repository and our view model. So the next case is to provide a state that can be used to be observed. So you can use an observer like live data or state flows. Okay, so for our case, we are going to use here a state flow. So you can create here a state. So I have shortcuts on creating states. So for example, let's call these names. And basically we are going to receive this as a list. And here we have to provide a default value. So for my case, I'm going to pass in an empty list. Okay, let's import these values here. Okay, so we have here our state. So we provided a mutable state flow and also we provided here a state, a read only state. So this is mutable and this is just a read only state which we can use to observe it inside our UI. So because we don't want to go inside our UI and also change our state. So that's why we are making this private here and change it only on the view model. And this one here is going to be read only so we cannot change it inside our UI layer. So for this case, now we can fetch our data inside our view model and prepare it to be displayed inside our view. Our data, let's create here a private helper function that can be accessed inside our view model. So let's call this load. Okay, now let's use here our view model scope dot launch because we are using here a suspend function. For this case, now we want to change our state. So we have here our names. So we can call names dot value. Now we can load our data. So we have our repository. So we can call here repository dot get names. And this is going to return us with the list of uh, names. Now this function here is supposed to be called whenever we initialize our view model. So to do this, we have an init block. So we can call here init and basically call load. And this one is going to load our data. So this is just as simple as uh, this example here. You could have complex lines of codes in order to load your data. So now we have loaded our data, we have to display it inside our UI. So we have the view, we have, we have the model, we have the view model. Now let's create our view. Okay, since we are using here JPA Compose, we can create directly here a screen. So let's create here a screen. And this is just going to be a file. Now let's create a new composable and we can just call this home screen. 
Okay, so for our home screen here, we are going to receive a list of names. So we can just call these names. So we are going to hoist our state above the composable color, which is just going to be the color of this home screen here. So we have the names as a parameter here and the list is going to be outside here. Okay, so for this case, now we can display our state. So we can create here, for example, a simple column or we can create a lazy column because we want to display things in a list. So let's create here a lazy column. And inside here, we can use the items composable, which is going to display a list that is similar to recycler view. Now let's pass in here a list of names and we can rename here the uh, color. So for example, here, let's change this to name. Okay, so we are receiving here a simple error. We imported a different part. So what we want to import here is the items with the list because we're going to have a list. So I think now the error is going to go away. Now let's rename this reference to name. Okay, so basically here, let's create a simple row that is going to display the name and the age besides each other. So for this case, let's create here a text. Okay, so for the text here, we can just call our name. Dot name. And we can change here the style. Let's use material theme. Dot typography. And we want to use here body large in order to create a larger text. Now let's copy this, press Ctrl C. Let's create a little bit of a spacer. As inside here, a modifier. And give it a size of 16 dp to differentiate or create a space between these two texts. Now let's pass inside here. And instead of name, we can pass in here edge. And let's change this to body large. Let's call this body medium to create a view hierarchy. Okay, so we already have here our text and also we have our spacer. So we have our view ready and we can hook it up. Okay, now let's go inside our main activity. Okay, so inside here we have to receive a reference of our view model and we can easily do this inside our main activity. Let's create here a variable and call this name view model. And we can use a by delicate methods now we have here a simple extension function that is called view models. Now we can call this view model here. Sorry, first here we have to provide this to be our view model, which is just going to be our name view model. Okay, so directly here we have provided what we want to create. So this extension function here is going to create a view model here whenever we want to access it. Okay, now here we have our set content. Now we can receive our state as a composer state. So for this case, let's create here our, let's call this name state. Let's call our name view model. And we have the names and we can collect this as a state. So let's call this collect as a state. And basically now we have an observed state. For this case, let's remove these greetings here and we have our home screen. And the home screens require us to pass uh, one parameter that is called the names. Now we can call here our names is state and call dot value in order to pass in the value directly. So everything is ready. We have our simple MVVM application. Now let's try to run this inside our emulator and see the changes. Okay, so our app is launched successfully and you can see that we have the names loaded here. So we have John, Musa and Vuvuzela. So everything is working perfectly. So this is just a simple example of an AVVM application. So let's recap here and see what we have learned. So you can see we created here our model, which is just the part where it's going to help us to fetch the data. And also we created a view model, which is going to connect between the model and also the displaying of the data. And for this case, we created here our home view model that is going to communicate directly to the repository that knows how to get the data. So the view model doesn't know where the data is fetched. So this could be coming from our database or from our network request. 
but it doesn't know it what it knows is how to prepare the data and tell the view hey you can display this data here and we created our view using our home screen and display the data from our view model so here our home screen doesn't know where the data is arising also so what it knows here is just it will require us to receive a list and display a list of names so it handles only displaying of the data and the view model knows where to fetch the data because it's the repository so the repository knows actually where the data is going to come from so this is going to help you maintain your code if you have a complex application so if you want to see how we implement an mvvm architecture in a real world application you can check this video here so for now let's leave it here see you in the next video